What's going on my beautiful people? Fernando David here. And on this video, we're gonna be discussing the operation side of a short-term rental management company. The purpose of the video is to get you to understand how important it is to uh, uh, systematize uh, SOPs and automating within your business. Now, before we get into that, let's first define two things. Let's first define what short-term rental management is. Short-term rental management is the administration and supervision of a short-term rental property. Within that, we have operations. Now, what is operations? Operations is the inner workings of a business. Now, it doesn't matter what type of business you have, whether you're creating a product, you're selling a product, you're in the service industry, any business has an operation side. And since we're talking about short-term rental management, I'm gonna give you what, uh, these are a few, but not all, of the departments within operations you should be focusing on and making sure that you have system, processes, and, and focus on automating some of these uh, departments so that your company is running as efficiently, as optimal, and more importantly, as profitable as possible. Now, before I get into what these tasks or departments are, here's one thing you need to understand. And in this video, I'm gonna focus mainly on what we refer to as the DIY or self-managed managed, managed uh, entrepreneur or operator within a short-term rental management company. Now, you don't need uh, to do everything yourself, and I highly recommend you don't. But I'm gonna talk about our company first and give you some of the type of clients we have so that you can have an understanding that everything I'm gonna talk about can either be hired out or contracted out. But our company is a full service asset management company. And within our company, we do a variety of things and we can handle clients uh, uh, such as clients that only want co-hosting, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second, to clients that want us to handle everything from A to Z. So the majority of our clients tend to be investors that are looking for passive income. Those clients, really all they want is a return on their money. So with those clients, we buy the property, or we find the property, we purchase it, we rehab it, we stage it, and we manage it, and then we provide our that client with a return on their investment and a a full report on on what the ins and outs of that property. Right. The second client that we get often are those that are currently self managing and realize that they really don't like the operation side of the house. They do like some aspects, but they don't want to do the operation side of the house, so they hire us to assist with operations. And then the, the next most common client, which has become very popular late, lately, are those clients that are looking to grow their business, and they already have their teams in place, and they just want us to handle the administrative side, uh, and we refer to that as co-hosting with them, and to provide them some guidance and mentorship so that they can grow their, prop, their uh, business, right? Along those lines of growth, here's, here's something that I was taught a long time ago from a good mentor of mine, and that is, if you're not growing, you're dying. Meaning if your business isn't constantly evolving, constantly looking for growth, constantly looking to automate, then your business is going to eventually die, right? We all know stories like Blockbuster, Kmart, Sears. These are massive companies that no one thought they would go away, but they did because they failed to continue to grow. And that this is what I need you to understand. This is how this video is going to help you as an entrepreneur and specifically as a short-term rental manager or short-term rental investor that's looking to do this full-time, right? So let's go on with the task 
uh, or some of the departments within operations that you should be focusing on to, again, automate and create uh, processes and procedures for. Number one is the managing uh, the property listing and bookings. Two is cleaning. Three is handling check-ins and check-outs, maintenance and repairs, guest communication, guest review. That's an area that a lot of people overlook. Marketing, bookkeeping and accounting, price management, another area that people fail uh, to uh, overlook often. Another one that people fail to overlook often is compliance, making sure you are legal, making sure you're up to date to the new regulations within the uh, short-term rental management uh, business. Vendors and staff management. Those, those are some of the few departments within operations that you need to focus in, focus if you are a owner of a, of a short-term rental management company or you're getting into the Airbnb business, right? Or the short-term rental business. Now, the plus and the reason why you want to do this again, just to recap, is because if you have a well-run operations department, you're going to have a well-oiled machine that's going to operate optimally, efficiently, and profitable, right? So, just to give you some ideas or some examples of some areas in which you need to make sure you have SOPs for, uh, and just uh, from, from a, a beginning standpoint, is licensing. If you are in a market that requires your property to be licensed, then that licensing procedure should be in an SOP. You should be able to write those procedures out and, and create a manual for it so that if you decide to hire that out, all you have to do is give that manual to your employee or your staff member, and they can just follow the, your procedures and policies on how to get that license. The next uh, one, next example that I always like to give is the staging of the property. Not necessarily what type of, uh, uh, what furniture you're gonna buy, but what type of furniture you're gonna buy, how you're gonna stage that furniture, how your cleaners are going to make your bed, how they're going to stage the shampoos, the soaps, how the, the, the folding of the towels, how they're going to uh, set your tables, how the cups, plates, uh, dishware is going to be placed in your kitchen. All that stuff should be systemized, right? There should be no winging of anything. You should have everything systematized so that there's no issue whether or not a, someone goes to a, a house in one area or a house in another area. It should all be the same in terms of your systems. It makes you more efficient, efficient if you do that and also helps you spot any issues along those lines. A great example that I always follow and I always like to talk about is McDonald's. McDonald's became such a successful franchise because everything they do is systematized. Everything they do is the same. Doesn't matter if there's a McDonald's in Miami or a McDonald's in Russia, that system and how to make that burger, how to cook that burger, how to package that burger is the same. And you should do the same with your short-term rental business. Now, along processes and procedure, the next big component that's going to help you grow as a business, and that's making sure you automate as much as possible. Through, auto through this automation, you should have a high quality PMS system, property management system, or and some people like to refer to as a vacation rental software system uh, to help you run your business. Now, I'm gonna to refer to it as a PMS system and not as a vacation rental software, but you, you know that the, the one and the same. When you're looking for a good quality PMS system, here's some of the things you should be looking for. Your PMS system should have a robust multi-channel manager. What's a multi-channel manager? It's a, a manager within your PMS system that helps you manage your listing on multiple platforms. 
if you've been following my channel, you know I'm a big advocate of using the multi-channel approach and more specifically in direct booking. I'm gonna to touch on direct booking in a second. But your PMS system should allow you to advertise um, across multiple platforms so that you can maximize your booking potential. Potential. More importantly, it protects you as a business. I've said this before, if you put all your eggs in one basket, you're looking for trouble. And a lot of you, unfortunately, are relying on Airbnb. If you're relying on Airbnb, you're you're, you're uh, uh, most likely or you're vulnerable to becoming the next Kmart. Because if something happens to Airbnb or if Airbnb decides to change something like they recently did this summer, which created havoc within the industry, or if they, for whatever reason, find or, or dislike you or find something that you violate and they take you off the platform, my friend, you are in big trouble. Right, so don't rely on just a one channel approach. Make sure you're diverse across the industry so that you're protected and your PMS system should manage that for you. The next thing your PMS system should do for you, especially if you, again, you are the D, uh, what we refer to as the DYI manager or the self-managed person that, tr that right now is not big enough to hire a big staff, it should, that PMS system should help you with your task management. Task manager meaning, if you get a reservation and once that reservation comes in and you have your checkouts or your check-in, those uh, inspections of the property and our cleanings should be automated. You should, that system should already send it to your cleaners, to your maintenance person if there's a maintenance issue, uh, to your uh, um, communi uh, guest communication person, if, that, if you have that, but it should have a robust task manager so that as you grow, you can delegate some of this stuff to your staff members. The next should be a robust uh, uh, accounting system or bookkeeping. You should know what's coming in, what's going out. Uh, again, if you're on a multi-channel approach, some platforms will pay you directly, some platforms will have you charge the guest yourself, but your PMS system should control that. You should know where your money is, when you're going to receive your money, uh, and you should keep an accurate record of your bookkeeping for tax purposes, for accountability purposes. That stuff should be automated. The more automated it is, the less errors you're gonna have because it takes away the human element. The next thing you should be automating is your pricing. Hopefully, especially if you've been following my channel, you are not that type of host that, that sets a price and forgets it. Because uh, if you're doing that, you're doing yourself and your business a big disservice. A set and forget approach is horrible, is a big mistake, and you should have a system, that's a, a dynamic pricing system that's done automatic to make sure that your pricing is optimal and make sure that you, because pricing is also gonna help or dictate how your accuracy rate is. So it, it it's a, plays a big role and that's something that you should be doing yourself, especially if you wanna grow. Uh, you can't go in there and manually do that stuff if you have 30, 40, 50 properties. It's almost impossible to do. You don't have enough time in a day to constantly adjust that. Uh, the next one that you're not going to have a lot of time in the day if you, have, if you start to grow big and have hundreds of property under management like we do, and that is your inbox. Your messaging should go into one unified box and your PMS system should control that. So if you get a message from a guest on, or an inquiry from, from someone on Airbnb or someone from booking.com or VRBO or whatever platform, those messages should go into one inbox. You or your staff shouldn't be going into every individual platform to answer questions. That's just opening you up for, for a lot of missed messages, a lot of missed inquiries, 
which is at the end of the day, it's going to hurt your business. The next thing that you should automate is your guidebook. There's some, like in Fort Lauderdale, they still require for you to have a, uh, a like a, a binder uh, in the house. But in, with today's technology, you shouldn't be relying on that. We have to do it because the, the regulation requires it. But for our guests, we have a digital guidebook. And we have a very robust digital guidebook. Our digital guidebook allows our guests to see all the information on the properties. It, it, it walks them through the dishwasher, how to use the dryer, how to use the coffee maker, how to use our electronic lock. It gives them access to, to everything within the property. It also, more importantly, is a revenue generator because with, within our digital guidebook, we give our guests recommendations of where to eat, recommendations of where to go uh, in terms of events. We also give them what we refer to as upsell. So for example, if you want to rent a car, you want to rent a bike, you want to rent a kayak, a paddleboard, all that stuff can be found in our digital guidebook and we get a percentage of those sales. So, but more importantly for us, as a uh, revenue source, it also enhances the guest experience. And by having an enhanced guest experience, you're gonna have a more satisfied guest, which is more likely gonna give you more five-star reviews, which again, creates more revenue for you because it boosts you up on the algorithms for these platforms. It is a win-win. So don't go cheap and get a nice digital guidebook for your properties. The next thing that you should be automating is, uh, or having are triggers and templates for your messaging. Your messaging should be automated. So if you get, for example, booking, you shouldn't be the one res replying to that. Your system should be replying to that booking. So for example, we get, a, we get a booking, the first thing that guest gets, it's a welcome message and a message explaining our processes and procedures and what to expect uh, before they check in. All that stuff should be uh, automated. Again, it's gonna save you a lot of time. The next thing that should be automated because it's a big time waster, waster and some people don't even do it because it, there's, it's very time consuming, and that is your guest review. You should be reviewing every guest. Now, I'll be honest, we, we have a template and it's a general review of a guest. So 99% of the time, you're not gonna ever have any issues with guests. And 99% of the time, there's really not a lot of interaction with the guests, especially if you're running a company like us. We don't interact on a face-to-face -face basis with the guests. So there's not a lot that we can write about the guests other than the fact that there were no prop, you know, that, that we had no issues with the guests. So that could be a general review. Now, we set that to go out five days after checkout. The reason we, we have that time frame is because if we have an unlikely event of a guest doing something inappropriate or, or damaging something or being messy and we wanna write something in addition to the general message, then it gives us the ability to go in there and do that. But that is not, common because it's not common is not wasting our time on a daily basis reviewing every checkout that we get then the last two things is you should have a direct booking website so your pms system should give you that now i don't recommend as uh, once you start to grow that you continue to use your pms systems website I suggest to you, uh, if you can do it in the beginning, awesome. But if you can't because of money, uh, then use your PMS systems website. But you eventually want to create your own website. And I'm going to tell you why. If you're in this business long enough, you're, you might outgrow your PMS system. Or you might find another system that better suits you. And you may want to switch. If you switch and you, the only website you have belong to that PMS system, that website goes with them. So it is, and especially if you like the website, your next PMS system may not have a, a, 
the same type of template of website. So you're gonna get a different look. And for me, branding is important. So you don't want to constantly be changing that. So if you purchase your own website in the beginning, you're better off because you can brand that website to you and your company. And um, this, I won't get into branding, but branding is really important, uh, especially as you start to grow and your name starts to get out there. You want to make sure that you're branding your stuff and not somebody else's. And then the last thing I want to talk about within your PMS system is that it needs to have robust analytical or analytics and robust reporting system. The more robust, the better. So our PMS system really breaks everything down. Like I know uh, uh, our occupancy rate per property. I know what the property is making. I know what, uh, how many views it gets, how many co our conversion rates, our booking lead time. Our owner's reports are done automatically through our PMS system, uh, but the reporting system within the PMS system is something that should be useful for you to help you to continue to analyze your business and how you are either growing or not, and so that you can constantly be analyzing, constantly be fixing uh, little stuff here and there to make sure you're constantly getting better. Without that, it, again, it can be done, but it becomes too tedious, too time consuming for you to do that. And again, the idea is to operate with, with as, as minimal cost as possible. And we've discovered that the only way you can be operate optimally with as little cost as possible is through automation, okay? It's just, it's just a fact. The more, you, the more automated you are, the more robust your PMS system is, the more efficient you're going to run, and the more profitable you're going to be. All right, guys. If you have any questions, please leave them below. If you have any uh, uh, suggestions as to how to optimize your operations better than I haven't talked about, again, list them below. Let's have a conversation. Let's share ideas. Please do me a big favor, hit that like button. It really costs nothing to do so. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Follow me on Instagram. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.